Now goblins are cruel, wicked and bad-hearted. They make no beautiful things, but they make many clever. Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril and I have another awesome tutorial for you today. The Great Goblin King of Moria, Derbers. A classic metal sculpt who towers over his fellow goblin minions, although that's not exactly hard. I'll be showing you in detail how to create a malevolent, fierce looking goblin leader here by making his features and armour super sharp and dangerous whilst building up the characteristic skin tones and hues that are synonymous to goblin kind. I'm working my goblin king up from a black undercoat which was applied with Citadel Chaos Black. Brushes ready guys, let's get painting! Base Colours All of Derbers' skin was base coated with a one to one mix of Castellan Green and Warg Flesh, making sure you catch the face, ears, jowls, arms, legs and exposed calves and toes. All of the goblin plate armour is given a base coat with a 2 to 1 ratio mix of Iron Warriors and Abaddon Black to give it that textbook dark goblin-y tone. The chainmail that extends over his back and butt cheeks was given a thorough dry brush using lead belcher to help it stand out slightly from the rest of the armour. The cloth around his arm and by his waist was carefully picked out with a one to one mix of Barachnar Burgundy and Mephiston Red. The hair was then base coated with a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Abaddon Black and Storm Vermin Fur. The gloves were picked out with a 4 to 1 ratio mix of Rhinox Hide and Mechanica Standard Grey. Finally, all the straps around the waist, forearms and calves were picked out using dryer bark. Skin and facial details. A manual shave was applied to the recesses of the skin by adding Rhinox hide into the base skin mix. You can add more or less Rhinox depending on how deep you want the shading to be. Focus on the recessed facial and muscular details and the jowl folds. When you're happy with your manual shading, apply an all over shade now using diluted Athonian camo shade, letting the seep into the recesses and reinforce the shading in the recesses themselves. The skin was gradually layered up now by adding small amounts of Strachan Green into the previous mix and this is the bright paint to add so don't overdo the tone by adding too much too quickly, focusing on the larger areas of goblin skin, even the shade showing in the recesses. working your way up gradually to a final layer stage using pure Strachan Green, further defining the framework and sharpness of the facial details and defining the muscle definition over the arms and legs, particularly ready for the highlights. For the highlights, I started adding in Ogryn Camo into the previous mix. This will help marry the sharpness of his goblinly pointy features into the super sharp look of the armour plating later on. This will also bring up the tone more naturally and give a sickly, inhuman look to his skin. Now 
As with the Strachan Green, this was built up gradually until I reached an extreme highlight using pure Ogryn camo. At this stage, you just want to frame the pointy ears, the outer folds of his neck, and highlighting the cheekbones and uppermost musculature to finish him off. His large goblin eyes and teeth were carefully picked out then with Abaddon Black. The eye holes themselves were painted in now using Zemesi Desert. A quick dot highlight at the top of the eyes was applied using Dawn Yellow. Finally, a thin vertical line of Abaddon Black was drawn down the centre of the eyes just to finish them off. His teeth were then very carefully picked out using Screaming Skull. Metalwork. An all over shade was applied to all the metals now with a one to one mix of Agrax Earth Shade and Athonian Camo Shade. This was diluted with Limey and Medium, the amount of which depends on how stained and ill kept you want the Goblin Armour to look. When this is completely dry, a second shade was applied using Null Oil. Here I'm looking to capture the super dark, almost black look of the armour. The darker you can make this here, the sharper and more malicious the plate work will look when it comes to the highlight staging. Now my shades are in place, dry and I'm happy with the overall look so far, I went around all the plate work and the sword with an edge highlight using Ironbreaker. This will look quite stark compared to the darkness of the metals, so keeping your application tight and controlled will be key here. The thinner your line work, the sharper and more sinister the goblin armour will look. At this stage as well, the chainmail was given a light dry brush with iron breaker just to pick up the texture of the rings post shave. A dot highlight was applied with a one to one mix of iron breaker and pallet witch flesh. This was applied to the uppermost points and edges of the armour to really drive home the sharp, malevolent, dangerous feel for the goblin armour. When you're unhappy with the look of the armour, an optional additional staining can be applied with diluted Castellac Bronze. This is applied sporadically over the armour and will just give a hint of extra rust and decay to the plate work, should you feel it a necessary addition. Red Cloth The red cloth areas were given a shade with using diluted Caraber Crimson. The red will provide an excellent spot colour which will complement the tone of the skin and break up the darkness of all the metals. I increase the amount of Mephiston Red in the base mix for the initial blocking layer. 
even the Karaberg showing in the recess folds. I then added Evil Sun Scarlet into the mix for the layer stage. As again, with the greens, the Evil Suns is very bright here, so be careful not to overblow the tone by adding too much too quickly. Building up gradually to a highlight using pure Evil Sun Scarlet just focusing on the upper folds of the sleeve and waistcloth just to make them pop. Now these cloth areas aren't terribly extensive on the model, so you don't need too many interim layers to build up the overall look. Hair and finishing details. The hair was given a manual shade with Abaddon Black, concentrating this between the strands of hair to create some shadow. A layer was then applied over the hair using Storm Vermin Fur, focusing on defining the individual strands of hair, leaving the Abaddon showing in the recesses. The highlight was then applied with a rough 2 to 1 mix of Storm Vermin Fur and Pallid Witch Flesh, focusing on the outer curls and tips of all the hair strands. The gloves were given a quick shade using Agrax Surfshade. Using the layered up for adding Gawthor Brown into the base mix at a rough 1 to 1 ratio, framing the gloves and separating out the fingers. Finally, the gloves and all the straps were given an edge highlight using pure Gawthor Brown. Here we have your finished Goblin King of Moria, standing at the head of the swarms and hordes of those who dwell in the darkness of the mines. The base and scenic rock were painted with greys and whites to fit in with the mine setting, the tutorial for which can be found in my 5 minute basing playlist. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, please like, subscribe and hit that bell for video notifications and until next time guys, take care and happy hobbying.